It's predicted that in our lifetimes, there will be more plastic in our oceans than fish. This is really what our oceans are turning into, these broken, fragmented pieces of plastic. Right now, there are already five trillion pieces of plastic in our oceans. And it's affecting animals. 90% of seabirds have plastic in their stomachs. And we could be eating it too. One study found that microplastics have made their way into popular sea salt brands. Ugh. But how did all this plastic get there? I decided to talk to Bonnie Mantellioni, a researcher studying plastic ocean debris at UNC Wilmington. Bonnie has spent the last nine years traveling the world researching plastic ocean waste. She even made this art exhibit out of the plastic waste she collected from her trips. Bonnie helped me understand that as water moves around the planet, it picks up plastic debris and washes it into the ocean. So it doesn't matter where you live. If you live in the mountains or you live on the coast, we're all contributing to this problem. What I wanted to know, what is it about plastic that makes it so pervasive? The really interesting thing about plastic is it's man-made, right? So most of the other materials that we use, nature has created, and so nature knows how to dispose of it. Well, this plastic is a man-made compound, and so there aren't the microbials in the world yet. It may eventually turn about, but unfortunately, there isn't anything to actually take those chemical compounds apart. So they persist for an indefinite period of time, and we really have no idea how long it takes because plastic has only been around really for about 100 years. We just know that on a high probability, it can take up to a thousand years to mineralize. And this is what we're finding everywhere in some of the most remote places on the planet. After talking to Bonnie, it made me realize that every discarded piece of plastic on the street could one day become one of those pieces of plastic in her jar. Most of us are good about putting our plastic in the recycling bin, but still, some of it will slip through the cracks. And that adds up to an estimated 245 million pounds of plastic litter entering the oceans from the U.S. every year. That's the same as the weight of eight semi-trucks of plastic entering our oceans every single day. Even if we could somehow stop plastic from entering our oceans, what do we do about the trillions of pieces of plastic that are already out there? Luckily, there are smart people working on solutions. Dutch inventor Boyan Slot started the ocean cleanup when he was 17. The project is currently raising funds to dispatch its first set of big ocean nets to start collecting ocean plastic. They say they can clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is roughly the size of Texas, by 50% in five years. Startups are also developing alternatives to plastic. One startup out of Bali called Avani is working on a biodegradable plastic bag made from cassava root. It's made from such natural materials that their bag is even edible. If a bag like that were to get washed into the ocean, it would not be harmful to sea life at all. And big corporations are finding new ways to reuse ocean plastic. Adidas has launched a sneaker that is made from recovered ocean plastic, and H&M has also launched a clothing line made from bionic yarn, which is a special material made from recovered ocean plastic. One company called PK Clean, based in Utah, is even working on turning plastic waste into diesel fuel by heating it in a reactor. These innovations are exciting, but solving this problem also starts with individuals like you and me. Of the plastic we use each day, 50% of it is used only once and then it's thrown away. Think of your coffee to go cup or your plastic shopping bag. Does it really make sense to use something that's designed to last for hundreds of years for just a few minutes? In 2015, we produced 95 pounds of plastic for every single person on the planet. That's an insane amount of plastic. If we were to transition away from plastics and return to products that can naturally biodegrade, we wouldn't have to worry about things making their way into the oceans. But before we can even make that transition, there's no denying that right now, our culture is addicted to plastics. Bonnie would agree, it comes down to each individual to take stock of the plastic in their lives and to start choosing to use less of it. It's just bring your own coffee mug, right? It saves billions of coffee cups that are used every year disposable. And so that's where consumers really have control over the situation. We're the ones driving it. We're the ones that can stop it. Think of it this way. Each time you make a decision to skip plastic, you're making a vote for the world you want to create a world where in our lifetimes there will no longer be plastic in our oceans.